Hi, this is Joseph. I wanted to walk you through two trades that were executed uh, through the trade copier. Uh, this is for the Forex Automated Trade Signal Service. Uh, the first trade here was on the Euro dollar. Second trade was on the pound dollar. Now, this trade, this particular trade, uh, paid 52 pips. I'll walk you through the details, how I found it, how I figured it out, uh, you know, uh, the whole setup, how I figured out the take profit levels. The reason that I wanted to cover this is that I get questions pretty often uh, for those who are considering or interested in using my trade copier service, and they're a little bit concerned that I use point and figure because I haven't really seen anybody else out there use point and figure uh, with their uh, day trading uh, system. So I've been using point and figure for many, many years. I started trading back in 2001. You've probably heard me say in some of my videos that some of the greatest traders in history use point and figure. Uh, they use basically the same setup, the same system that I'm using. And this is not, you know, like a simple moving average crossover or the trend line is pointing, you know, in a 45 degree angle. And I'm just kind of being a little sarcastic here with some of the videos that I see on YouTube and Facebook. People try to you know, simplify trading by just kind of labeling everything under these certain categories and then expecting you to believe them and follow along. And trading is very difficult. We all know that if it was that easy, you know, there'd be a lot of people trading and making a lot of money. And the bottom line is you're up against some of the greatest traders around. When you're trading in the markets, when you're day trading and you're out there trying to make some money off of it, you've got to be aware of what's going on. And point and figure is really, when it comes down to it, it's the in the in the simplest term that I could make it, if I was to describe it, uh, again, without looking at these columns, you can see the X's are the up, the moves to the upside, the zeros are to the downside, uh, bearish moves. So without, you know, getting into too much detail as far as the setups, and I'll walk you through this one and the other one here in just a moment, but basically it's that constant supply, that constant demand of sup, uh, supply and demand. Uh, there's that constant battle. Uh, I should say. So we're also analyzing phases of consolidation. So sometimes consolidation can occur at the lows, sometimes at the highs, and these will often lead to reversals. But you want to be really careful because if you're not trading it correctly, if you can't analyze and understand the structure of this particular consolidation, you could get stuck in a head fake. Uh, I used to do that all the time when I first started trading. I didn't have enough experience. This goes all the way back to 2001. I would trade breakouts, but very often they would lead to uh, failed breakouts and I would get stopped out. They would turn around, you know, price would go back inside of consolidation. So we've all been there. Point and figure eliminates that if you use point and figure correctly. So that's what I use ultimately. Every time I take a trade with the trade copier, I'm going to come back to this particular chart, my point and figure, and I rely heavily on my entry. But let me show you how the whole thing's set up. So this is a bar chart. I always start off with a bar chart. Occasionally, I'll, I'll look at a candlestick chart. Uh, but the bar charts are a lot more easier for me to read. Uh, this is just my personal preference. It doesn't mean that candlesticks, I'm not saying that they don't work. They certainly do. Uh, I used candlestick charts for you know a few years in the beginning of my trading career. But I found that bar charts were a lot easier to me because I didn't sit around waiting for a specific candlestick pattern to develop. I would look at the relation to price, the behavior, the range of the bar, and volume. So what you see here is uh, an indicator. This is volume. The bottom indicator down here, and uh, this is pretty much all I use as far as indicators. I just primarily use volume. And I'm using uh, a wave, uh, an average wave volume indicator down here at the bottom. That's what this one is here. It's just kind of drawing my attention to certain uh, price waves along the way. And you can see here what I'm doing. I'm counting the waves relative to the time frame that I'm trading off of. So I want to see price moving into, for example, if I'm going to trade a reversal like this, it needs to be a pretty significant reversal. How many times have you been in that position where you saw price hitting a old resistance? And this, in fact, right here, this blue resistance line is an old resistance that goes back to the beginning of September. So it was pretty significant. You can see that it ran right into the, to it and it stopped. Now I'm going to show you the pound dollar. The pound dollar is a little bit different. Uh, but this one set up a more picture perfect opportunity in the sense that not only did I have everything confirmed and I was watching the behavior and this wave right here running right into this resistance and then stopping, there's obviously a lot of activity here. There's 15,600 contracts traded here within, there, there's one, two, three, four, uh, 30 minute bars. So that's uh, two hours. So within two hours, we had this upswing here with volume and yet it still couldn't overcome and exceed that resistance level. So that really draws my attention, right? I'm watching this, I'm counting these waves and I'm paying attention to this. And then I see the reversal. And then I see a lot of activity and a lot of momentum 
in this reversal here. You can see this first candle, or I'm sorry, this first bar closes relatively flat, and then we get this accelerated move to the downside. Now, these moves right here where you see these ovals, these are actually retests, and these are retests of this resistance. I like to see retests, but we don't always see retests. But when I do see them, they give me an extra sense of security that I'm trading in the right direction, but I'll show you what it looks like on the point and figure. So let's go over here to the point and figure. Here are the retests. This is the retest. This is the high. This is the test. This is the retest. And you can see the whole thing drops down. Now, this gave me an entry here, which was a double bottom entry here at 1.7, I'm sorry, 1875. Now, the first target, I always have a first target, which is a conservative count, and then the final target based on the data that I have here. The final count here was at 1.1823. And you can see this was a pretty accelerated move. There, there was relatively, there really wasn't much of a pullback on the move back down. That's why you see such a strong uh, column here to the downside. This paid a total of 52 pips. Now, I recommend when you use my trade copier, if you can trade standard lots, this would result or this would have resulted in $520 on this particular trade. $520 on this one trade, this single trade alone, very, very easy, you know, nothing for you to do with the trade copier. I execute these trades and then I close these trades, but I want to show you what it is that I'm using as far as the trading system behind what is, what is it that I'm looking at and what is it that I use to execute these trades and to confirm a valid trade. And you'll notice that with the point and figure, and I say this all the time, there really isn't going to be any kind of entry or a change or in, until there's some kind of a change in volatility based on the way I've constructed this chart. So I'm not going to get into details because you're probably just, you know, thinking, is, is this trade copy the right thing for me to use? Does he know what he's talking about? Um, learning this system is a totally different topic. <laughs> you're probably not here to learn a trading system. You're here looking at my trade copier service to see if it's something that would actually work for you. So a lot of my trade copier subscribers have set up separate accounts. They let me trade that account for them through the use of the trade copier. We use social trader tools and I'm executing those trades every day. And at the end of the month, they're looking at the profits and it's up to you. You can do whatever you want. All the profits are yours. You just pay me a one-time monthly fee for the service. But I want to walk you through the second trade here. Uh, the second trade was on the pound dollar. So now we're looking at the pound dollar and you can see that this was a little bit different. There were some pullbacks here, but they weren't really the more dramatic pullbacks in the tests that I saw with the euro dollar. It, nevertheless, it still worked, but this one was clearly showing me signs that it wasn't going to move as far as it typically does. This, again, this is the pound dollar and you can see here it's testing basically an old September 3rd high right here. Doesn't really overcome that level. And then it fails and rolls over. And this gave, me, this gave me, for the most part, pretty much the same setup as the euro dollar. So this is the pound dollar here. This is relatively a different, uh, it, it's, it's slightly different in the sense, again, where these retests develop. They're still there, but they're not as pronounced as what we saw with the euro dollar. I refer to the euro dollar chart that we saw earlier as a picture perfect trade, but it still nevertheless is a qualified, it's all structured. It still qualifies here as a move to the downside, but it wasn't as significant and the move wasn't likely to be as dramatic. And that's why this only paid 24 pips. So 24 pips is $240 with a standard lot. So the total between those two trades, if you're trading one standard lot and I execute these two trades, you're going to end up with $760 for the day, just with these two trades alone. Now there were other trades, but I want to show you how this trading system works, where I'm taking the bar charts and the information with volume, analyzing the phases of consolidation, and then looking for my opportunity here with the point and figure chart. So again, some days, very often, the pound dollar is going to produce really big results. If you look at the uh, the YouTube channel. You can see some trades where we're, you know, earning 190 pips, uh, 210 pips. It doesn't happen every day. This is so. This is a really good example of what you could expect on an average day. There's going to be slow days for the pound, and the uh, euro dollar might be moving a lot more farther and faster for obvious reasons. You know, they're two different economies. There's going to be two, di two different things uh, as far as uh, news and and you know political statements and things like that can, that can all have an impact. But again, this was a relatively slow day. Uh, it doesn't happen all the time, but it's to be expected. But nevertheless, this clearly, just these two trades alone, pay for the service. And the rest is all pure profit. As a matter of fact, one of these, this one here alone would have paid for the service, the trade copier service, this $240 trade right here. So again, the other one was the uh, euro dollar paying a total of uh, 52 pips for a total of $520. Now you can certainly use any lot size. It's not mandatory that, use, that you use a standard lot. I recommend it. 
if you're, you know, if you're, if you're serious about your trading and you're really trying to make a lot of money every month, five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars or more a month, you've got to have a significant amount in your trading account. And Standard Lots is just clean. It's easy. We always know that you're going to be making, you know, ten dollars a pip approximately with the euro dollar and the pound dollar. Uh, mini lots are okay too. You're earning about a dollar a pip. There's nothing wrong with that. Or you can use half Standard Lots. Any variation in between because you can control and specify the lot size. I have a lot of subscribers to this service that are using half a standard lot. So instead of making, you know, 700 and let's say, let's just say $700 for the day, they're making about $350 for the day. There's nothing wrong with that either. Again, one trade could easily pay for the service and all the rest of the trades are all pure, pure profit for the rest of the month. Thank you for watching this and I'll send out another update video this week.